So go ahead and speak up. I'll try to see if I understand. Okay, could you state your name and spell it for the camera, please? My name is Iris Critchell, I-R-I-S-C-R-I-T-C-H-E-L-L. Can you briefly describe the conflict you served in and what your duties were? I was a pilot with the Air Transport Command in 1942, 43, and 44 uh, of World War II. How many times have you been to Rancho Remembers? Well, I realize this is your ninth year, and I, I must have been here at least six times maybe seven. At first, I was coming with my husband, who's also a pilot veteran of World War II. And then he became ill and unable, and uh, he passed away last year. But then I've been very fortunate to bring some of my students from Harvey Mudd College who've gone on in their fields and have been willing to come over and bring me and we're sharing today with Mr. John Roberts, who's a graduate of Harvey Mudd College. What do you like about Rancher Remembers? Well, I like the active participation by all the students. They have become uh, comfortable with communicating and participating. And all of this couldn't happen without their being comfortable in the idea of participating. Uh, and so I enjoy meeting each of the group and seeing how wonderfully they greet the world and greet each other and handle them themselves. And this is, is part of the spinoff, I like to think, of, the, of some uh, pretty inspiring teachers. Do you have any other additional comments you would like to say? Well, I think it was uh, a marvelous concept that Aaron Bishop brought to the situation. And now that uh, Robert Sanchez has joined in, in the recent years, uh, and it is unique and it's carried out uniquely, uh, and this participation, this friendly participation by each of you and your outgoing uh, spirit is uh, remarkable. And uh, it took some teaching leadership to bring that to start. And now you're in gear and I hope it can be continued. But I also, I read the, uh, signs on the ends of the gym up there. And that, of course, expresses the whole thing beautifully uh, as to the program and what it represents. And it's very nicely stated. And I hope that we have a photographic copy of all of those statements. <laughs> because they are uh, what it, I see in it also. That's it? Did you run track? Were you the one who ran, tra ran track? Do I win? Did you run in the Olympics? I swam in the 1936 swam. Olympics on the U.S. Olympic swim team. Yes. Could you describe that experience for us? Well, it's a pretty big order. I've been blessed in life. I think being here with you is a very big experience. And I've been blessed to have several remarkable experiences. I mean, in this, the spirit that's gone on through these nine years that's brought this program here for you uh, is very remarkable. The spirit, the human spirit resurrection that occurs with the spirit of why we have Olympic Games. Started by the Greeks in 1700 BC and lasted for 700 years of uh, meeting on a sports field instead of a combat field and on uh, established rules and playing field and so forth. 
But above all, the spirit of competition for the joy of meeting and competing, not necessarily winning. In recent years, there's been a little bit too much emphasis maybe on the winning part, and they forget that some of the major benefits come from participation, whether they win or not. And yes, it's remarkable when they can achieve at certain levels, but there are remarkable achievements at other than the gold medal level. And I can sidetrack that one. There a recent, uh, well done in my opinion, documentary is called More Than Gold. That's the title. And it's about the 1936 Olympic Games. And it is more than gold. It's the experience of meeting athletes of all the world. Now, for instance, the, uh, we all travel together, all the, all the different teams, the gymnasts and the, and the track and field and the weightlifters and the swimmers, and, they're all, and the rowers are all on the same ship, and we all travel together. Uh, of course, in the modern day, they come and go at a little bit different times, but there was a definite spirit of camaraderie of meeting. In addition, when we uh, arrived at the um, uh, area of the games, the site of the games, they had the Olympic Village, like they'd had here in Los Angeles, they had for the fellows, and then they had all the girls in one big uh, dormitory that was right by the main stadium area. And it was all the women of all the world, not just the U.S. Olympic team. And we were in the, uh, this big dormitory, the prison house, and we met women sports uh, stars from all over the world. And in some cases, they remained friends through the years. And you see, there is a spirit way beyond just winning a medal. And that spirit was sufficiently significant and worthwhile to humans that the Greeks put it in action and found it useful way back, and it lasted 700 years. And then I think the visionary uh, gentlemen of the day of the late 19th century who saw that it might be a good idea to revive this. And they revived the modern Olympic Games in 1896. Now, I was raised on the Olympic Games because my father was an athlete and a coach, but, uh, so I have some of that associated information. That they uh, revived the idea to the advantage of all nations to experience the camaraderie on the field of competition uh, in whatever sport. And this is the predominating spirit that we trust will continue. But what I saw there, and I saw it in some of the more recent games too that I've been, I've been allowed to attend, that there, in their case, this was Berlin, and it was a nation already in difficulties and severe political distortion, if we could just leave it at that, that in many observers could see it leading to World War II, which it did, but it had the Olympic Games, you see, or the sites are selected eight years before it had been selected. Berlin had been given the games for di different reasons long before Hitler came to power. And so Hitler and the many maneuvers and not good things that were resulting from his uh, uh, amazing uh, leadership in Germany in 33, four and five, uh, he was pretty well established at 36, but the Olympic Games had been assigned to Berlin eight years before. And then there was the well 
Some nations weren't so sure they wanted to compete because of all of the various uh, difficulties with Hitler and, and his uh, regime. And they, uh, they debated, or there were those who didn't want to, and here in this country, we had uh, people who boycotted the games would not have anything to do with it because of the activity uh, of where Hitler had already gone into nations and destroyed in Europe in 35 and was on his way to what we then had to fight in World War II. And so there, were, there was some opposition and the uh, idea of uh, the games, uh, was it going to be right and worthwhile to go ahead and have the games? So there was a lot of discussion of that. Even with the athletes that made the team, we had to go out and raise money to get enough money to get on the boat because they didn't have enough money because a lot of donors had backed out because they were unhappy with the politics of Germany, not the idea of the Olympics. And we were exposed to all that. Before we left, we, we realized this kind of thing was going on, even if we were pretty young. And uh, we knew about the boycotting and so forth. But my observation myself was that I enjoyed our team and then living in the Friesen house with the women of the athletes of all these nations and the friendships we made there and then watching the competition and how Hitler's goals submerged. For two weeks of the Olympic Games, the spirit of the Olympic Games prevailed over the politics of Hitler and Germany. And there is a worthwhile advance in human spirit endeavor. And so the Olympic Games represent something a lot more than just competing for a medal. And I got a lot of this out of this broad experience, not just to swim 200 meters breaststroke, but I got to watch my fellow athletes in other events. I knew them and we, we talked, we were on a boat for 10 days going over and 10 days coming back. We got to know them all. And uh, it was uh, that kind of a, an experience that gave you a broader view of the full meaning of the spirit of the Olympic Games. And uh, we hope that our human spirit will still recognize this as we go forward. Any other comments about anything before we wrap this up? So, Any other comments about this before we wrap things up? Uh, comments about? Like Rancho Remembers. Uh, uh, Rancho Remembers. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I want to leave with the high school and the library uh, at least one book and maybe some others that give a lot of the history of some of the things you're interested in. And I've mentioned that I'm going to be giving a book that writes up the particular things that I've been answering about. The Women in the Ferry Command is a book, The Women in the Ferry Command, just come out and I feel that it's very properly uh, done and very valid. I'm going to leave a copy of it here because I'm saying that it is to you students of Rancho Cucamonga High School, I thank you for remembering. Thank you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. <laughs>